we did have a three and two week, a couple nice victories. I got very close through uh, one and three quarters quarters against the, the Denver Broncos and the Baltimore Ravens, but uh, the Ravens really separated themselves in the second half. Uh, so unfortunately, we got that loss, but it's time to maintain the winning record. I like all my picks for this week, so let's begin with the first pick of the Week 10 edition of my Harvey Hot Hand. So let's begin. Bills at Colts. So this one, I like it a lot, actually. The, the Colts actually have one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Meanwhile, the Buffalo Bills have one of the highest scoring offenses in the NFL, Curly ranked number four. When it comes down to it, I think this will be third down defense, third down offense, and red zone defense and offense. When it comes to the Indianapolis Colts, they actually have one of the worst red zone defenses in the NFL. Uh, they're currently ranked 16, so they're, they're middle of the road. But it looks like the, uh, the Buffalo Bills offense is currently ranked sixth in the red zone. So this will be third down and red zone. The Bills do a decent job at that. The defense of the Indianapolis Colts is is very, very poor. Uh, but fortunately, in my opinion, you have Joe Flacco instead of Anthony Richardson, so you can actually go out and complete a number of your passes. But with, with uh, Michael Pittman not being out there, I think it's going to be difficult for Joe Flacco to have uh, a nice shot with this offense. I will take the Bills to win here. Uh, and, you know, put up 30 points. You're out, Keon Coleman. I don't think that'll make a massive difference because you do have Amari Cooper out there now. If Amari Cooper was not there, then I'd be a little bit concerned. But you're playing against the Colts, who have one of the worst defenses in the NFL. I think your defense will step up when it matters big. You get a six-point victory. You win 30-24 to and cover a minus three-and-a-half point spread. The next one. Vikings at Jaguars. So this one, it's unfortunate. I'm rooting for Mac Jones, as always. But I think when it comes down to it, the Vikings are one of the most blitz-happy teams in the NFL. And Mac Jones, over the course of his career, and especially as of 2023, the last time we saw him was Week 12 against the Giants, and it was pretty bad. Uh, a very, very bad interception. Uh, basically, it was a two-yard interception that nearly got run back for a pick six, where Mac Jones was throwing it to nobody into the hands of a Giants defender. Uh, but it's unfortunate that Mac Jones going up against this blitz-happy defense. He'll be under duress the entire game. The Jaguars have the second-worst pass defense in the NFL, and you're going up against Justin Jefferson. I think Aaron Jones will also have a, a big impact in this game. Give me the Vikings in a big, vi big victory. I, I actually would have felt more confident Mac Jones going out there and performing well if it wasn't the Minnesota Vikings, but if it is, I'll take a nice 14-point victory. The Vikings win 31-17 and cover a minus 6.5 point spread. Sorry, Mac. I, have, I, I, I was your sole defender, basically, it seems like, on the internet. Nobody was defending you. I can't defend you with this one. It's unfortunate, but, uh, you know, these are the circumstances and this is the world we live in. Let's go with the next one. Titans at Chargers. I'm actually going with the Chargers on this one. Will Levis is the starting quarterback of the Tennessee Titans this week. Mason Rudolph, I think I would have felt less confident picking the Chargers to win and win, win big here uh, if he was the quarterback, but he isn't. Uh, the Chargers, the past two weeks, have outscored their opponents by plus 35 points, 53-18, to 18, and they only have one singular game where they have not forced uh, at least one turnover. Meanwhile, the Tennessee Titans have, uh, have, have, have had a turnover at every single game this season and have three of the nine games where they only have one turnover. So they are a multi-turnover team. Will Levis is a large contributor to that. I think that continues. The Chargers pick it up and get a nice victory at home. Cover a minus seven at point spread. Give me the Chargers. Will Levis will make mistakes. We were defenders of Will Levis. We like Will Levis, but I, I you know, new information. I have to change. I have to update my take. Will Levis just isn't cut, isn't right now cut out to be a winning quarterback in the NFL. Give me, uh, give me Jim Harbaugh, great defense. Give me Justin Herbert, uh, uh, picking up offense. I'll take the charge to win 28-20 and cover a minus 7.5 point spread. The next one. Dolphins at Rams. So this one's an interesting one. I, I think the Rams will be able to get it done at home. I do not trust the uh, the uh, the Miami Dolphins because I think with Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua out there and the way Kyrie Williams played last week, I think we can now say that the Rams are a good team. What does Tua do against good teams? Not much. And I think the shock of the NFL, or at least the shock of the Rams, is without Aaron Donald, how is the defense going to pick up? Well, honestly, with, with the, the at the start of their three-game winning streak, they actually lead the NFL in takeaways, pressure percentage, and sacks. And the rookies have been tremendous, especially with Jared Verse. I think he has a serious shot, and, and if he's not favored already, he should be the favorite to win defensive rookie of the year. I think the Rams' defense will be able to come up with a couple nice stops, get pressure on Tua, generate some turnovers. I'll take the Rams to win and cover. It's only minus one and a half points spread. That, that, for me, that's an easy pickup with the Rams team that has been doubted throughout the entire season with Puka Nakua back, with Cooper Cup back, Matt Stafford, your quarterback. The defense has been insane the past three weeks. I'll take the Rams to win 23-21 and cover a minus one and a half point spread. 
The next one and the final one, the last pick of Week 10's Harvey Hotend is... Falcons at Saints. So this one for me, this was actually my sixth pick that I boosted up into my fifth pick. I think right now the Atlanta Falcons, they're playing good football. They're playing very good football. Meanwhile, the Saints, they just cannot hit a nice rhythm whatsoever. You Spencer Rattler out there, then then uh, he got benched. You fired your head coach. The Atlanta Falcons at least have found some sort of consistency here. I think they have a two game uh two game difference in the NFC South. This is a divisional game, and normally you don't want to bet divisional games, but I am right now. Uh, currently, it looks like the the Falcons actually play decently well on the road this season. And the last time we saw uh, these teams go up against one another, it was a game winning field goal. Uh, for the uh, the Atlanta Falcons. I do think, though, the Falcons will find a way to get it done. Derek Carr right now does not look great. The wide receiver core is all banged up there. You lost uh, Rashid Shahid, uh, Chris Olave dealing with a concussion right now. It's not great. You fired your head coach. Give me a team that isn't moving so many pieces. Give me a team that isn't reeling. I'll take the Atlanta Falcons to win 27-17, win by 10 points, and cover a minus 3.5 point spread. And those are my Week 10 picks. From a Harvey Hot End, brought to you by Dr. Squatch. You can use the link down below or go to www.drsquatch.com slash the Harvey Hour and get three free fight scrub bricks. That's a $24 value. Absolutely free for new customers when you spend $30 or more. As always, I bring you in to discuss what you hate, what you like, whatever the case may be. By the way, last week, I forgot what game it was. Off the top of my head, I, I, I think it was Saints Panthers you wanted me to pick. Not not a great choice. Not a great choice whatsoever. So, okay, well, I don't always get them right. That's for sure. So I mean, uh, you passed me in the win loss. So, but I would say there are two games out there that I thought were a little easier than some of the ones you've got. That so you picked go, there. go with the one you would switch. Um, Let me look if, at if, the, if you need my games, there you go. I, I was uh, it was what Bills. Let's see, I think I Bills, would, Vikings, Chargers, Rams, I think and I Falcons. Would switch uh, the. Titans Chargers, I would swap it out for the Broncos Chiefs. Broncos Chiefs. Yet, Look at Broncos Chiefs. Yet, that that's uh the Chiefs are eight. No. The Broncos have played poorly against good teams. Yes. The point but, spread but, seven and a half. I think the Chiefs will cover that. The Chiefs are playing well, here, great. The Chiefs the played great though. last week. Here's the big And they have DeAndre Hopkins hold now. On, hold on. You think they played great? They, they did. They, they played well. They lost to the Buccaneers. The oh, but they, they their offense came alive, and Patrick Mahomes had his best game of the season. Okay, well, first of all, here's here's an issue with that. I have the Broncos covering. So if I were to bet that game, I'd have Broncos plus seven and yeah, a half. Well, I, I think that was an. I think so. So you think pick. I should go Chiefs minus seven and a half? I, I that's. I'm just telling you. Ask no, for my opinion. No, I have. Okay, I have. I have. I have. Okay. So wait, hold on, hold on. Wait, what, you, there's another game here. That game would be Titans Chargers. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The other one. Uh, I think the the um, the the Bills Colts game could be Bills, pretty Colts. close. Okay, I think so it could you, be pretty close. I'd swap out San Francisco at uh, Bucks. Bills Colts. San Francisco's got all their players healthy San now. San Francisco minus six point five. Yep. Okay, we'll see what that is. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm glad you wrote it down. Now we're keeping <laughs> track. 20 and 25, we're, we're bouncing back. We, we had a bad uh, week two weeks ago. We went one and four. Uh, but yet my point spread record for that week, I, I, I'm i still mad about that. I went 10 and six, which is a very good record for, for against the spread. But f uh, four out of the six losses were my Harvey Hot Hand picks. That's crazy. So wow. I think this is actually the first time I'm betting the Falcons in a Harvey Hot Hand. Yeah. I'm pretty sure in, in favor of them. I normally don't pick the Falcons because I don't know I don't know what to see for them. I think I picked them actually. Maybe it was week one against the Steelers. I may have picked them week one. I'm not sure, though. Uh, but, yeah, those are my picks. Uh, brought to you by Dr. Squash. Link, link down below. Support the channel. We thank you for the help. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right-hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.